Alrighty, we are killing a meal. We are editing yesterday's video. Do a little voiceover and getting ready for another class. Uh, I got a couple more classes today. Today's a busy day for me, so. I won't be filming a lot, but it's a chest day and a back day. We're going to get it all in the video today, so I'm not skipping out on back today, all right? And, uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the gym. All right, what's up, guys? So we're back today with a back and biceps workout, but instead of doing a um, traditional voiceover on this one, I'm just going to let the clips kind of speak for themselves, and I'm going to overlay some, uh, some text on the screen so you guys can see that. Um, and just follow the workout that way. Instead, I wanted to kind of just talk on a specific topic uh, over top of the footage today, uh, and that's kind of just designing the ideal program. Um, so, I remember as like a young lifter, I would do a lot of the big programs that came out from the popular, um, you know, fitness YouTubers and bodybuilders, such as you know Greg Plitt, Steve Cook. Um, they all had their kind of signature program that they designed. And I, you know, I got a lot of results from them early on, and it was great because it kind of got me in the mindset of what a rep set scheme should look like, um, what, <laughs> you know, order in which you know to place the uh, the exercises and movements. Um, but as I got more and more into lifting, I kind of wanted to branch out and do my own stuff because um, I found that a lot of their stuff really pertained more towards beginning lifting, um, or it just didn't simply some of their programs just didn't really work well for me. Uh, and so I started to kind of experiment and read more on my own. And I began taking, uh, once I had college, I you know had an exercise science minor, so I started taking all these classes, um, uh, stuff like uh, you would take for your NASM certification and your Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist certification. Um, I ended up reading all of these books and uh, you know doing a lot of case studies on you know different uh, people in the industry who have done a lot of research into this, like Dr. Schoenfield, for example, who is a very well-renowned uh, name in the fitness industry when it comes to the very scientific side of um, developing a program and just the science behind working out and growing the body. Um, and what I found from all of these is that you know all these programs are based off of the same general principles, uh, which I want to kind of lay out today, so you guys have an idea of really what goes into making a program and how you can design your own program that will allow you to be successful um, but you can design it in the way that's best fit to you because every single person is different, every single person is unique um, and so while cookie cutter programs work uh, you know when you're first getting into fitness as you get deeper and deeper into this and you become more and more dedicated and you also becoming more and more focused on growing specifically in certain areas that you find are your weaknesses you're going to have to start customizing and tailoring your own programs to yourself. And now you can go out and you can hire a coach for this. Um, and that's why I would say, you know, especially if like I want to do a competition prep, I'm going to have a coach help me because I want, you know, someone else with a professional opinion to come and be a second set of eyes on me. Um, but I would advise, you know, having a coach help you with this if you're very serious and you're going to compete. But if you're just trying to put on more size or you just want to get fit, um, but you've already kind of gone through that, you know, doing the programs that other guys have put out before. Um, here are just some of the best tips I have for designing your own program to meet your specific needs. Um, so the number one principle that you have to abide by is progressive overload. And to put that in simplest terms, I'm sure a lot of you guys already know what this is, um, but just to reiterate to make sure I'm covering all the bases, progressive overload is simply making sure that some variable of your workout is progressing from day to day, week to week, month to month. Um, it's the basic idea that if you go into the gym and you do the same thing every day, your body's gonna plateau. You know, from a medical standpoint, your body wants to stay in a state of homeostasis, right? It wants to find something that works and stick with that. So if you apply the same stimulus to the body every day, it's going to adapt so that it can handle that and it no longer needs to change to handle that stimulus. So 
obviously the way to counteract that is to keep changing up the stimulus in some way so that the body always has to keep changing to adapt. And now we can kind of predict what the change is going to be based on the difference we apply in the stimulus. So this is where it comes to now that we know this. Um, well, how do we differentiate the stimuli? Where do we change things up? Well, it depends on what your goals are. Um, and this is where I would first look at your set and rep range of your workout. If you're someone who wants to get stronger, um, say you're looking into powerlifting, and I'm making this very cut and dry, it is a little more complicated than this, but this is just a basic overview. Um, so obviously there's a lot more science and there's a lot more that goes into these rep ranges and set ranges than what I'm saying, but this is the general kind of like broad view of, of what would be entailed in these. If you're looking to do more of a powerlifting, and a strength building kind of program, you should stick in the rep ranges of around six to eight reps. That's gonna build a lot of strength. Obviously, if you're looking for a more powerful maximal output, like a power lifter, you're also gonna to wanna to train even lower than that, using very high loads, you know, 90, 95% of your max for singles and doubles to help get your body accustomed to that power output and critique your form as you're at a near maximal output level. And then complement that with building strength with sets of you know, four, three to four sets um, and up using uh, a weight that you can really only handle for around eight reps. That's going to really tax the strength side of the muscle. Now conversely, if you're not so worried about the overall strength of the muscle, if you're training simply because you want a larger muscle, well then we're gonna move into what we would call hypertrophy. Um, and if you're looking to gain size, uh, well one of the limiting factors is the fascia in your muscle tissue. A lot of times it's tight, and one way to stretch that out is to pump a lot of blood into it. So with more sets and reps, increasing the overall volume of the workout, and using around, I like to say, I just stick it right at 12 reps. So a lot of people say 10 to 15. Um, I just like to go straight for 12 reps when I'm doing hypertrophy. Um, and then if I have a little left in me, I'll try to get to 15. That presses a ton of blood into the muscle, and that time under tension, uh, will help give you a hypertrophic response as well as the amount of blood that's forced in. It will stretch the fascia tissue in that muscle, allowing there to be more room for growth and you'll actually get um, a much larger muscle. Now this is why you can see guys who are, they look not so big, yet they're very, very strong like a lot of power lifters who are on the smaller side. But you can also see bodybuilders who are very, very large lifting weights that are a lot smaller simply because they're using that for the hypertrophic response and using the constant tension and isolating the muscle instead of using more compound movements and a full body you know, attack on lower rep ranges. So now that we kind of have an idea of the reps and sets you're gonna be wanting to use, well, how do you structure that uh, you know, into an actual workout? Um, now, because I'm doing this road to 200 and I'm trying to put on weight and size, I'm simply going to focus in on the bodybuilding side of it today, the hypertrophic side. Um, and maybe in another video I'll talk briefly about uh, the conjugate style and different kinds of powerlifting techniques you can use to progressively overload um, in that side of things. But for today we're going to look at bodybuilding. And so for bodybuilding, for getting larger, bigger muscles going up in weight, um, the way I structure my programs, and this is uh, you know backed up by uh, the NASA National Association of Sports Medicine, um, and uh, uh, I've read this, um, or I, I did a bunch of uh, research papers on this when I was studying for the Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist degree. Um, you really want to start with your most explosive movements first, and your most compound. So a compound movement is just a movement that uh, covers more than one joint. So we're looking at bench press, um, squat, deadlift. Um, these are big compound movements that use a lot more energy and then they span a ton of joints in the body. And because of that, we would like, we like to use them first because we have more energy so we can go, you know, we can put more into those workouts. But also because if we pre-exhaust smaller muscles, they're more susceptible to injury if you're going to be doing these later in the exercise or in the, um, in the workout. So I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm just saying if you want to reduce your risk of injury and be able to give that exercise all you have, I would put those more at the beginning of the workout. As you progress, you want to progress from uh, more overall compound movements to more specific isolation movements. And this is where you can start targeting certain areas of the muscle. So for instance, today you can see I'm doing chest. A lot of my movements are starting to be targeted more towards my upper pec. 
the clavicular head is weaker for me, so I try to go and target that more using more incline movements, um, pressing more over my head. That allows me to target that specifically. And then also you see I do more close grip movements that targets the inner side of the pec as opposed to the outer side because I'm trying to build more as uh, pectoral tissue closer to my sternum because I feel it's a point that lacks for me. So in an overall program, you wouldn't be able to be as specific as this, but when you start designing your own, um, you can make your own rep set. You can design what movements you want to put throughout so that you can target the specific areas of the muscle that you want to change. And then over time, um, you'll find that a lot of those areas will catch up. And now like anything, you have to match this with proper nutrition and a proper amount of rest, but designing your workouts is crucial to getting the results you want. You can use a cookie cutter um, or just normal workout regime that you'd find online, but if you really want to start getting that next level result, you have to really do some research and you know figure out you know how to work the muscle for yourself and take an honest time to assess your body and see where do I want to change, you know, where do I want to physically grow. Um, and once you've done that, you'll really um, have yourself set up for success. But knowledge is the key here, guys. You really have to do your research and figure out how exactly you're going to make yourself grow. Uh, I hope this has been informative and hopefully I can do some more of these in the future. Um, but please, uh, tell me what you think of these. All right, so we are still here. This just finished rendering. It's 11 o'clock at night and um, we just finished this. This is supposed to go up today at 10 in the morning, but it took forever to render. So now we're here eating my chicken and macaroni with a spoon because Maria and I have been busy with classes and have decided not to do any of the dishes because we're so adult. So <laughs> we are editing at 11 o'clock, eating dinner at 11 o'clock, with spoons at 11 o'clock. <laughs> Did I mention it's 11 o'clock? This is like, this is senior shambles, dude. And for those of you who know what that is, comment below. But this is true senior shambling right here. Um, but yeah, so moral of today's vlog is don't, Wash your don't procrastinate on washing your dishes or else you're gonna eat chicken with a spoon at 11 o'clock. It's a very specific moral, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the moral. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I'm just slap happy. I'm really tired. And this vlog needs to end. So, like and comment and do all that stuff. I'm getting fatter, so 200 will happen eventually. I'm getting stronger, too, so that's the nice part. And I'm sure it's because I've been eating chicken with a spoon at 11 o'clock. All right, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> what the heck is this? For you, give me your hand and we'll make it there soon. Life is just one beautiful view. We'll eventually get there. This is the pursuit. This is the pursuit. This is the pursuit.